Hey, what is up everyone? It's Rich. All right, welcome to 10 Minutes with the Legends Edition. This is gonna be so awesome. All right, so today we're gonna to look at a mono. I was, I'm, I'm trying to um, mix things up. And so what, what I'm doing is, uh, I, I, I do like to surprise people with choices. Um, and, and um, you know, if you're gonna do Legends, um, you wanna cover the whole planet Earth. <laughs> It's important to to really, really just have some wild stuff and people that are incredibly influential and have created really like long influence chains and, and changed art, you know, I and mean, that's kind of what a legend does. I think. That's an influencer. They're on YouTube. They all covered the Amber Heard Johnny Depp trial. Now what are they gonna do? <laughs> All right, anyway, let's get to this. Amano. Mamano. All right, so so I first saw Amano's work. I always like to share like how I discovered the artist uh, at a Japanese bookstore um, that's, I don't know, they're probably like 20, 25 minutes from my house. Uh, but uh, probably, I, I would say that it was a little bit before I broke in professionally. And the weird thing about Amano was, and I'm not exaggerating when I say this, for probably 10 years... I was a fan of his work and I didn't know anyone. And this is even when I was working professionally, no one ever mentioned him. No one had books of his art. I never heard a peep about him. And then he kind of started to trickle in and do a little bit of work for DC occasionally. Um, but uh, it was real weird, but it was like, like for a long time, I always kind of considered him this like awesome artist that I knew that, that I really didn't know anyone that knew, knew the work. And it was, you know, not like a big deal or anything, but uh I, I've had a few artists like that that they're so good and you go like how like how was not like everyone talking about this artist um so as we look at these pieces a few things that you're gonna notice is um he sometimes will will drop out like a hard line and you'll get these much more softer almost um like cl cloud clouded I don't even know what you would, would describe describe it as it's just really really soft illustrations um this is a final fantasy piece I see chocobos and fun stuff going on in here I love final fantasy um and um uh yeah other times he'll have a much more harder kind of aggressive line and it kind of like uh, the two styles are real interesting another thing you'll notice with his work is his use of color um just even getting the this video together it was really really incredible how many different color palettes that he uses and you know most of this if not all of it is traditional uh so so i i'm i'm only saying that just to protect myself meaning that that um I'm nearly sure it's all traditional, but there may be something that was colored digital that, that, that I'm not thinking of. Um, but yeah, it was it was really interesting seeing how many different color palettes that he uses for pieces. Because generally speaking, um, you know, people will will have um, you know sort of a comfort zone colors that they know work. Um, you know, combinations of shapes and things that they use that 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 you know help them um, execute their drawings. Amano kind of throws that all out the window and it's just sort of like whatever's going to happen happens. It's it's abstract, it's surreal, at times it's masterfully drawn where um, there's no doubt in your mind that, that if he wanted to, he could do stuff that's very, very... I'm just going to turn this just for fun. But oh my god, this is so good. Uh, escape. I'll go back to this. Um, So... Some of this work is Vampire Hunter D. I've mentioned um, I have a 110-page graphic novel that I did with Ryan Benjamin uh, on Vampire Hunter D, all from the original creator. It was overseen by him, um, and um, it's pretty exciting. It's finally coming out. We finished it about five years ago, and uh, it was a crowdfunded book. We weren't a part of the crowdfunding, to be clear, just when I say this so that people don't get the wrong idea. But uh, they did two crowdfunded um campaigns it raised over a million dollars it did really really well for them so it's exciting um but uh we don't get a cut of that money we just got it was work for hire for us um but uh still really really cool so um my guess is that they probably will do a third campaign um just to make it available for people that sort of slept on it um but uh, anyway, but uh, I think that this is a Final Fantasy piece too. This was credited. Well, it was on a, a blog, um, and they were break. They were showing Final Fantasy art. Now, my guess, just based on my own knowledge of Final Fantasy, is I, 
I, I would maybe guess that this represents Final Fantasy X. Because if I vaguely remember, there was like a parade, like a real colorful parade with all this stuff sort of flying around. But I'm not sure. If you know what, what if this is Final Fantasy, what Final Fantasy is this um, referring to? Or is it just a an abstract piece? But it's really cool. But I remember fireworks and all this stuff. This is cool too. Final Fantasy brings back a lot of fun memories for me of um, just, oh uh, god, those games were so fun. I think the first game took me like 60 hours to finish, something like this. This was the only one that I wasn't 100, well, there, there was a couple, but I wasn't 100% sure that this is a mono. It was credited as a mono, and I kind of looked around to try to double check, and it seemed to come up as a mono, but it... It does feel a little tighter than some of the other stuff, but this this stuff up here does look a mono, like the hair in particular really has his aesthetic, so I put it in anyway. I mean, it's, it's a beautiful piece regardless. Oh, man, this is cool. This one had a little bit of warping. I don't know if it's a photograph from a book and maybe the page was sort of bending or something like that, but... Um, uh, Anyway, it looked a little, a little, um, a little warped here. And this, this is interesting because this is definitely a photo stat. Um, so this could have been the wallpaper person, whoever made this wallpaper, um, statted this onto this background. This is cool. All right. Someone's honking their horn outside or something. Something's going on. This is really cool. Man, this is great. But Amano definitely fits the bill of legend. So please recommend more legends. I have another one in mind, actually. There was there was one legend that I thought of last night that I was like, hmm, hmm, hmm. That might be very cool. So, oh, look at this. I've definitely had, if if not this piece, similar pieces from this, this theme of pieces that he did. Because I remember, like, it's just... It's kind of dark fantasy. It's more of a scribbly line. It's It's got that sword and sorcery kind of thing going a little more hardcore than some of his more um, kind of romantic art, I guess you might call it. Man, this is great. I've got another piece coming up that's going to knock people on their butts. It is so good. But yeah, this is really, really great. God, man. I, I shot a video version of this. <laughs> video version. I shot a, a, a I shot a, a a video before I did this one and went through the art um, and uh, I was like I could do it better and uh, one thing that I said in the other video is is my channel is great and I'm sure people like enjoy seeing the art but if you're someone that is easily influenced these videos could drive you to have like um, a split personality in terms of like what you want to do with your art. Because, like, one day you see a Frank Miller video and you're like, oh, man, yep, this is it. I want to do something like this. Then you see the mono video and you go, no, you know what? This would be cool. <laughs> so I apologize if I'm giving anyone indecision in their own art. Then the bottom line is just have fun with it and draw whatever you want. That would be my recommendation. Then you'll be fine explore poke around try different things see what you excel at see what's fun for you see what people that like your art like this was the piece look at this this is crazy i i'm i don't i don't even really know what to assume on this because this is so it's so much tighter than most of the stuff that he does and it's it's i mean it's really got like a you know, Frazetta, Al Williamson, like Alex Nino. I mean, it's very, like, I don't know if this was done in the 70s or what year it was. So so what I read about Amano was Amano um, originally worked in animation and kind of got a lot of um, fame for working on Speed Racer in the 60s. And then um, his career kind of took off from there, but... I would assume that this was maybe done in like the late 70s or early 80s, but it could be way off. It could be like done in the 90s. Who knows? But uh, it is really, really cool. This is great. Some Vampire Hunter D. But yeah, I'll, I'll keep people posted on the Vampire Hunter D um, release and stuff like that. Because uh, if you're a fan of Vampire Hunter D, I mean, it's it, Ryan did a real great job on the pencils and he colored it too. So it's, it's pretty cool quite an honor to do it. it it really hasn't sunk in but um uh 
someday, I guess, it'll, the impact of, of doing something cool like that. I had a pretty pretty diverse career. <laughs> Worked on a lot of a lot of different stuff, which is which is cool. I definitely have not just worked on superheroes. I'm, I am proud to say that that I've done a lot of different stuff that are, are comic stories and even my own personal work, which is more illustration of fine art. But yeah, it's kind of cool. I'm gonna darken this one a little bit. There were two. There were two two files that I saw that um, looked better in small scans, but with the magic of Photoshop, I can get the bigger scans that didn't look as good to look closer to them. But this is a great piece. This is really, really cool. It was tough to find a high-res scan of it, but this was the best that I found, and it, it is nice. I, I just love how he applies paint. Like this shell with the Rococo sort of, I don't even know what you call it, like metal and stuff put on it. It's just so cool. It's bejeweled, bedazzled. And this, this um, the way that he applies the paint here is really cool. Amano's great, man. There's no two ways about it. Look at this. Woo. Amano-licious. <laughs> I like this little head in here. God, it's just so... Oh, these, these skull faces in here. I used to love doing that. It's funny that he does that. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I, I You know what it was? Is There was... Um, I think it's an HP Lovecraft Cthulhu book. Like a tr paperback. A friend of mine had it when... Right after we graduated from high school. I remember seeing it. And it's a tree with all these like faces and weird shit in it. And I just loved it and i've always thrown that in stuff since then <laughs> people know the the cover because i i actually have talked about it in other videos R russ will know russ will go oh that's so and so it's kind of a grayish cover with like red eyed faces um in a tree <laughs> this was an interesting piece it's like he's really playing with a shot here because it's I, I can't tell if the if he's standing or if they're laying. Like, is it a down shot and they're on a carpet laying over each other, or if they're upright? I kind of think that it's they're laying, and it's interesting because if you look here, you can see his arm comes from around her, and he's kind of grabbing his sword. That's cool. This is another one. I'm gonna bump up the saturation on this a little bit. Nice big scan, but it was a little. Whoa, no, not Hugh. Not Hugh. Rich saturation. It'll make this look more popping. Yeah, this is good. This was a little dull. Pretty heavy duty piece. Kind of creepy. Kind of creepy. What? Uh, we saw this one already. The piece that I just shot, when you look at the other scan, you can definitely see um, a reference to uh, Gustav Klimt in it. Not not just the patterns, but the the headdress that she's wearing is right right from a, a Klimt piece. But yeah, his his work at times is almost encrypted, where where you really sometimes have to work at, at seeing what the piece is. This this is more of a design type thing, um, but um, you know, some of the other ones, you know, there'll be multiple figures or animals and stuff like that floating around. This was really cool, and this is a really soft approach. This is this reminds me a little bit, not, not like exactly, but Frazetta's early oil paintings had this soft look to it, where um, uh it it didn't have hard edges and it was all soft and it really gives it a like a pillowy kind of vibe like it's just really interesting but man look at the the work that he did on the dress here is amazing and then this is just incredible and these are really cool Oh man, it's so good. But yeah, this stuff kind of looks like Frazetta, like the early Frazetta oils. I don't think Amano is working in oil. He may be, but I, I kind of don't think so. Oh, someone asked too, because um, they said, oh, you know, talk about the tools that the different artists use. I'll always tell you if I know, but I, I try not to guess just because it's like odds are I'll guess wrong. 
So, um, yeah, the, all, the this is what I said to them. As I said, unless I've worked around someone, I really only can... The only other way I would know is if they've said it online or if I've read it in an interview. Um, but past that, um, you know what I mean? I, I, I can't look and really um, recognize different paints. Or, or even like it was they were asking about Frank Miller's stuff. Sword is great. I wonder if he was a Frazetta fan at all. Was, even this, I mean, it's these are traditional painting techniques to be clear. But um, yeah, I wonder. I wonder. I mean, I if anyone that's a fan of art and fantasy art and stuff like that, I mean, it's hard not to like Frazetta stuff. To be honest, this is cool. It's it's refreshing to see just pen and ink. I'm nearly sure that this is a mono, but um. Yeah, this is really cool. Very gritty. I mean, it, it's... Um, you know, for people that are interested in doing gritty inks, this would be my advice on it, is you still have to control your edges and stuff like that, meaning that that, that um, you can have really funky-looking lines. Like, they don't need to be perfectly feathered lines that all match up and start and end at the same spot and stuff like that. But what you'll see that he does, though, is do you see where the edge of this is? That's what's important. This is important. And what's also important is when you go back and you read it from far away, what kind of gray does it create? As long as you're controlling that, it'll work. If it starts to turn into mud and you're going beyond the forms that you're trying to show, you'll get um, bad results. And also, I'll recommend this too. For people interested in reviews or lessons, I do do... Um, 20 minute reviews and hour long lessons that are one on one. Um, so I'll offer that for people interested. It's only, I'm, it's, it's probably in two more months, I won't be doing lessons and reviews. Patreon will still have lesson and review content though, but just I won't be, I don't, I'm not going to have time to do direct lessons and reviews. So definitely hop on that soon. So this is a great piece. I was a little, I was a little um, unsure if, um, the darkness of this piece was the photo that someone took of the page or if um it actually looks that way i'm, I'm wondering if it maybe is a little bit more like this let me hit the color up just a little bit I'm not saying that that's what it would look like that's a little too saturated i think interesting piece though we can see a little bit better it's, this is a wild looking structure. Man, he's good. I, you know, it's it's interesting too, is is so as as someone who was trying to break in as a penciler uh, before I worked on that Crystal Planet book and you know was really having trouble um, fitting in because I didn't want to just draw like everyone else and so like like I like drawing my own way. Um, but uh, what 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 I found is is um, you know, you really, if you're going to do something super out there, you, you know, you're really putting your, your career in the hands of an editor that has the vision to be able to, to go for something that's not the norm. So, like, a mono is really, really good, but, you know, you could do stuff like this. I mean, obviously, if you did it at this level, the more people would be into it, but, you know... Not everyone's going to get this. Not every comic fan is going to get this. You know, this is looks like almost like a more casual type piece. But it's really cool. But is it cool to us because we're artists? Or is it, you know... But it is neat. But this, like, in what I had said in the other video that I shot is... A piece like this should be very encouraging to people because... You don't like like there's a little bit of perspective involved in this and and but there's like you don't have to have masterful anatomy chops to draw this. You don't need to draw the best drapery, but but you know if if someone spent a couple of weeks every night trying to do like watercolor pieces like this as a for instance, you could get some decent results, you know. But you just have to try it and go for it and see what comes out. But um, you know have fun with your art and experiment with it if if that's the kind of um thing you want to do don't you know don't ever um not do something because you don't think you're going to fit in because that was the hard thing for me is is i just i knew that i didn't draw like you know um uh, exactly like what a marvel or dc would would be looking for my stuff was a little 
a little different. But I think a little different is actually a good thing. So, all right, that was a mono. So good. <laughs> Please continue to recommend artists. If you've recommended them already, it's fine. I don't ever consider that spam for someone to say, hey, man, I recommended Julie Bell and Boris. Come on, do a video on them. I saw your posts. <laughs> you can keep posting it. Don't worry. I will do. I'll do a video on them. Um, uh, I feel bad almost combining them together. I mean, they, I know they're a married couple, but uh, they could have their own videos. Um, but uh, yeah, more Legends. We're going to do, I think we'll probably do about 10 or 12 more Legends videos. These are pretty fun. These are the top, top artists that have just had huge careers been highly inspirational to people it's fun fun looking at this stuff and it, you know it's gonna be good why because they're legend all right have a great day smash the like subscribe if you haven't subscribed especially if you got to the end of the video and you're not subscribed come on do me a solid and then share my videos please i'm trying to build the freaking channel up a little bit every video should be getting a thousand views really hopefully i'm i would love to see him get like three to five thousand views so come on Pushed it. Push it. <laughs> All right, later.